Hi, welcome to another episode of uh, Barbell Junction. Uh, my name uh, is Azmi, your host, and with me today is uh, Will and also Ben, right? And uh, we're going to talk about practical ways yeah. to to a practical be- better health, a healthier lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. He- he- healthy lifestyle, <laughs> mm. practical <laughs> implementation. Yeah, implementation. That that you could said it for health and fitness. Yeah, yeah. health and fitness. Yeah. Okay, but before that, please uh, go to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click the notification button. And uh, also check us out on Spotify. You're listening to Barbell Junction, Malaysia's first strength and fitness podcast. Brought to you by Zulfit Malaysia, the distributor of Eliko Strength Equipment. Welcome, guys, to the show. Hey, what's up, man? Ask me. Yeah, you, you guys have to remember. You have to talk. You know. Yeah, <laughs> like, the podcast doesn't work. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, just kind of nervous, man. Yeah. Uh, hey, don't be. Uh, don't be. I mean, we've chatted for yeah, that's uh, not, uh, yeah, yeah, 10, 15, 20 minutes just now. Don't be. Uh, uh, this is not an interview. That's true. This is not a radio show. No pressure at all. It's just a chat with microphones. Yeah. It's it's just a chat. And and the good thing is that these guys have uh, forwarded me some questions to ask. <laughs> and uh, um, so I better start. Hey, we like structure. Yeah. We like structure. That's how we. That's how we do. Yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why we're. That's why we're trainers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we just. We just, there has to be a set A, set B, yeah. set C. Yeah. And that's why I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> go, uh, yeah. go, Jim. You yeah, go Jim. Jim. I'm, yeah. I'm like, you know, I tr- actually, uh, the first episode that uh, we did, we actually, I actually wrote down all the questions, like seven or eight of them. Right. After the first two questions, it was it all, yeah, all hell broke loose because we just like, and the guest was just talking about something else, you know. Straight out the pin. Yeah. So uh, after that, I just gave up writing any questions or doing any research. It's just. Right. The best, in my opinion, is just to have a conversation with the guest. I agree. You know? I actually yeah. agree. Uh, that, that's I actually thought of thought of doing that. That was my approach. But Benny had, uh, came up with the idea, so you know, like I thought, yeah, he's blaming you, man. <laughs> but if you've ever had a chat with Willie, you uh, know, yeah, I, yeah. That's yeah. What I do, yeah. I just like yeah. offload <laughs> all the wordy. blame on everybody yeah. else. That's how. Yeah. That's how it works. But I, I guess yeah, either which way is fine. But yep. we do hit, need to hit the the topic of uh, the podcast, right? Yeah, let's try. So, let's, but let's, let's keep it within yeah. context, but. But before that, I think uh, let's get you guys to introduce yourself to right. the viewers and uh, audience. So, Will, probably you can just start first. Uh, okay, so I'm Will. I'm an Aquarius. I like long walks on the beach and uh, bubble baths. Okay. Uh, I, I do like the bubble baths, though. Uh, I have been personal training uh, for, I think, the last like five, five years, six years, but on the side. Um, I've been training myself since I was, since I was uh, 14 years old, uh, lifting weights and uh, you know just trying to manage my own nutrition. And r- I used to get like a bunch of um, uh, information from you know like Flex Flex magazine, like oh, yeah. Muscle and Fitness back in the yeah. day. Like that's all you had, right? Yeah. Like no, that's not back in the day, bro. Unless you're old. How old are you now? <laughs> I'm, I'm 28. 28. Know? Yeah. I I I first read Muscle and Fitness. In 1985-86. Oh man! During during time, and I keep saying this in the podcast. Lee Haney, right, right, Rich Gaspari, blah blah blah. For sure, for sure. Oh geez, yeah, that's back in the days. <laughs> that's yeah. old school, man. But yeah. like, okay, well, I I was reading. Um, well, Muscle and Fitness still existed in my time, and um, yeah. it I was reading it when I was like a like a, a chubby 13 year old, you know, like just trying to find a way to get jacked. And then you see like these people on these magazines, you're like, okay, they must know what they're talking about. Did you ever do men's health much? I did because uh, that was that was the most confusing thing because you'd read it one month and you'd be like oh this and then the next month you'd read it and you'd be like yeah I like, swear it told me something completely opposite yeah month. it's like carbs are okay this month like they're great for performance carbs yeah. make you fat the next month yeah it's right? like October yeah. carbs yeah. November carbs are evil yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, I, isn't it the same with uh, with any fitness magazines though because they 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 based on of um, uh, personalities and there's some articles. In, it, 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 I think it's massively driven by their desire for content. Yeah, they ju- they just need to be putting yeah. stuff on pages every month. Yeah, so th- they're not massively concerned with what is going on those right. pages as long as they're filling pages with content. Yeah, I also found that um, that because I started probably the same way as you you did, right? Yeah, I, I love uh, looking at people who are really big and muscular. Right, yeah. that's how I, I fell in love with with the industry, and uh, when I started lifting weights. I just followed the program 
program in quotations for you uh, listeners on Spotify. Um, and nothing worked. Mm. <laughs> like nothing changed. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say nothing worked. It works initially yeah. and then it stops working. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, why does it stop working? And then you go on to the next thing and then- Yeah, exactly. So how old were you when that, that kind of process occurred where you went, okay, magazine sort of, uh, y- y- there's always like some topless guy doing set 1A, set 1B. Yeah. That, wh- yeah. How old were you when that, like how far into your journey were you when that stopped occurring? That stopped occurring? Oh, sorry, when that stopped being effective. Um, man, you know, the thing is, uh, I didn't realize what was effective or what wasn't. I was just like, I, I thought that like, if you just kept hammering it, eventually, like you just get more muscle. Right. So like, I just thought like, okay, like if it's not this workout, then it's the next workout that's going to come out the next magazine. It's like, it's always just one magical workout that will, you know, rule all. Yeah. And, and you know, like that's the. That's the thing, like when we first, when I first started out, I think, and same for you, right? Like when we first started out, like that's the only uh, avenue you have for information, yeah. you know? So like you, you see like some Jack guy who's uh, on a bunch of uh, a gear and he says like, this is how you lose like uh, 20 pounds in eight weeks or something. And mm-hmm. you go like, oh, this is, this must be it. And you do it yeah. and you're like, it doesn't work because well, yeah, obviously it doesn't work, you yeah. know, like, because Back then, I didn't, understand, I didn't understand context, right? I didn't understand like, okay, how, why did this work for him in eight weeks, but it didn't yeah. work for me in eight mm. weeks. I just thought like, if it worked for him, it's gotta work for me. You and know? They, never, they, they never say that uh, it's not gonna work for, for everyone. Right, it's it's almost like the truth. Why would they? they, they yeah. Their job is to sell magazines yeah, they to can't everyone. Say yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. They can't so, say that. so I was duped, I was, you know. <laughs> we, 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 so were all dudes, man. Yeah. we were all there are the reasons I'm not doing anything right now yeah <laughs> you know uh, this actually like reminds me of the I remember when I was in my final year of university and that's when like I had a men's health stack of magazines like right. this high right? right and it was like my housemates came back after like sort of mid term yeah and I'd gone like I'd blown up quite a lot. I'd been training for kind of a couple of years and I, I hadn't really put on much mass and then suddenly I'd just gone poof. And the, they all came back and they were like, whoa, what's going on? And all I'd done was I'd been following the Men's Health Big Arms Workout. Right. <laughs> and, and it was this thing where you trained only twice a week. And it was, pretty, it was a pretty full on session, but because I was in final year of uni, like I had so much work and I was running a club at the same time and like I, I couldn't do that much training. So I was like, okay, mm. that looks good. And I was like, wow, maybe I need to only train twice a week and that's the secret. And when I looked back a couple of years later, I was, like, I was just thinking, oh no, that was the bit where my mate who had a, he had like a massive tub of weight gainer oh. that, that he, didn't, right. he didn't like the taste of. So Sweet. he gave that to me. And I was just like casually shoveling that onto like huh. my cornflakes in the morning and stuff like that. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. And all I was actually doing was just putting an extra sort of 800 calories right. onto my breakfast every day. <laughs> but at the time I was just thinking, this men's health stuff, that's, that's the way to go. <laughs> Twice a week, some random cookie yeah. cutter workout. That, that's it, I'm in, I'm in, yeah. Yeah, like. <laughs> Deficit deadlifts and some bicep curls. <laughs> yes, that's the way to go. Yeah, that's the key, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what about you, what's your, I mean, like, um, can you tell us something about yourself? Besides that you mix the <laughs> weight gainer with your cornflakes. I mean, we're getting with complexes. It's just basically frosties then, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, from, from my point of view, the whole fitness thing, it comes from a couple of, couple of different angles. Like, right. I'd, I'd love to just generally be a competitive sportsman. Like, I'm just not very good at it. It was what we were talking earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, we're talking about like, um, why trainers became trainers, uh, become trainers, is because we were actually like just really motivated athletes with none of the genetics to get there. Okay, so my point of view with this um, comes down to, have you ever read Christian Thibodeau's Neurotyping? No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I mean like, yeah, I, I, I have, I've watched um, a bunch of um, round tables where Thibs and uh, a bunch of other SNC coaches uh, discuss it. And I'm taking a pinch of salt, but I like I, I, I we've talked about this before about how you think that neurotyping is uh, is a is, is a great is a great way to sort of begin 
with how you, how you start training Sorry, people? just to give this context. So, so from that, I, I think it's a pretty good way to just kind of create a base level understanding of the fact that people are different. Right. Not just based on their sort of physical being, but sort of physiolog physiologically and sort of- Genotyping, right? Um, no, neurotyping. Neurotyping. Okay. So it, it's just the fact that everyone has a different brain makeup. And right. Excuse me, because, so what he's, what, Thibodeau has done is he's put people into five categories. You've got type 1A, type 1B, type 2A, type 2B, and then type 3. And if you were looking at it from a sort of a scale, at the top end of that sort of type 1A, you've got people that are brilliantly talented, but very difficult to coach. And I, I, work, I work quite a lot with athletes and obviously in, in an attempt to be a competitive athlete myself, I've right. been in a lot of athletic surroundings and, and coach a lot of them. And you, whenever you take someone who's brilliant, like naturally, they're very difficult to tell, it's very difficult to tell them what to do because they've spent their whole lives just going, I do this. Right. Like, I, I pick something up or I, I run and, it, and I'm brilliant. Like, right. Stop trying to tell me what to do. And a lot of the time I think coaches are at the very other end of the spectrum because we're not necessarily Gifted. That gifted. Yeah. But we're very good at thinking about how to make ourselves better. Mm. And so, I mean, that's the only reason I got anywhere. And, right. I, and I didn't even really get anywhere. But in, in, in terms of the, the whole thought process behind getting better and better and better at something, that, I think that's what makes coaches really good is that we're just complete geeks about. Exactly. The I, I, I think uh, most of the, I think the general population, uh, if, if I can just generalize, is that they don't want to think. Mm. Right, so they want yeah. they want someone to think for them, and therefore you just give the programming, you just give the nutrition, and they just follow. And we're know. obsessed with thinking. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. And yeah, yeah. The, and the co I, I believe that the coaches and trainers have to be that way, right? Yeah. Because or yeah, else, I think you're right. You know, like um, uh, the when when I um, started out this business and all these thing, things, um, when I look at personal trainers uh, in Malaysia, and again, I'm sorry for all the personal trainers out there. Uh, Don't apologize. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very apologetic. Um, the way I see them run their clients, for example, is just just to make them sweat, oh, just to yeah. make them oh, feel God. like oh, they've, they've, oh, they've done dude, something, we right? Gotta, yeah. So my down. opinion is that I mean, you 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 probably can get to their their clients' goals that way, but I just feel that there's more to it than that. And I'm not a personal trainer. <laughs> Uh, you don't criticize me. Don't you know? Don't bash me anything, but uh, that's just how I feel, you know. And especially now, when when I have this gym and I get a lot of powerlifters come here, and they're, they're very different in terms of how they train. Yeah, like um, they know what they're doing. They, they, their programming has cycles. I, I I don't know what's the technical terms like, the periodization, the the, yep. the, the whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and. Uh, when when I started out with muscle and fitness and all that, it's just about uh, okay, five sets of this, five sets of that, yep. and then we just done and that's it, right? But the way that I see these people, they are you know they know the difference between uh, training and a workout. Of course, you, you guys know what I mean? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think the way I see it is that like training has a purpose, right? Yeah. Uh, like uh, most people work out just to sweat. You yeah. Know? Or, or to, to make some calories up so that they can yeah. have a bigger yeah. lunch later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, like, especially if you're, a, you're an athlete, you know, you, uh, you train for a purpose, right? Whether that be for powerlifting or, uh, you know, get bigger muscles if you're, a, if you're a bodybuilder. But I think you're absolutely right, you know, like um, the, the fallacy is that people think that just because you have a heavy sweat that it's a good workout, right? Um, and I guess it depends. It depends on like, because most, People that go and you know that that go and uh, go that gravitate to these types of workouts, they just they just want to they just want to sweat it out, right? Like they don't really. I don't. I'm not sure if they even have a particular goal in mind. Most people want, like, yeah. You know, they, most people want fat loss, but like I guess some movement and some work, some uh, activity is better than being sedentary. Exactly, yeah. You know, but like, I, I don't think it's the most optimal way uh, and I don't think that's the only way to get results out of, uh, out of, out of training. If you have a, 
particular goal in mind mm -hmm. you know like it w whether that be like building muscle or uh, uh or fat well you, you kind of have to sweat a little bit for fat loss yeah though, unfortunately mm -hmm. but like you know you don't have to thrash yourself all the time yeah just yeah, no. yeah. you have to sweat for fat loss yeah you, how, then how are you gonna lose fat i mean oh, okay fine that's fair but like you, the start yourself. you you have to you you have to like in terms of you want to like uh uh create a caloric uh funnel through activity you would have to in my opinion try and you know move a little bit so you're saying that i don't have to uh, do anything to i don't have to sweat to lose weight well no you don't i Take mean you, you can just right. you, right, can you, just, you, don't. you yeah. can just do it you know, with diet right that's what you're saying yeah yeah and also have the aircon on the whole time why is that because the body heats up is it uh, or it requires i mean it's just a, a, a it's a relevant fact to how much you sweat like oh okay it, People getting obsessed with how much they sweated during their workout is uh, it, it's a massive pet peeve of mine because mm. the the majority like if you take someone through a Bikram yoga workout, that's true, and yeah. they've done a couple of long lunges, but the room's absolutely Hot. steaming. Hot. Mm. Yeah, you're gonna sweat like hell. I mean, you go yeah. you go into a sauna and sit down, right? You're like you're soaked, you're saturated, mm. but you could you could do some like i'd imagine a lot of what your guys do, are doing in here in a powerlifting gym mm. that's very well air conditioned right and they're maybe practicing their lift three times and then they're taking five minutes break so that they get longer than that perfectly. yeah <laughs> yep. yeah ten minutes break they have yeah. they're watching the, the person lift next to them yeah. they're watching their own video they're they're making sure that they're fresh so that the next time they hit that lift they're doing it perfectly again because yeah. they're not too fatigued they're probably burning more calories than the person sat in a sauna right so you actually described it very, very accurately. That they nowadays people use their phone, they, they check their form and they <coughs> review it, and it takes so long to just get into the way next. Too much time in gym, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, I mean, we have people train here for four hours. Oh damn! Total, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, I thought like during the muscle fitness days that you have to have uh, minimal rest you know between sets like uh, 30 seconds or 90 seconds yeah. you know but after looking at these guys like mm, okay mm. <laughs> don't necessarily have to do that uh, depending on the goals it I suppose. Yeah, yeah it depends because like they're they're training a different system yeah. right and um like what we're training uh, especially when it comes to hypertrophy it's it, we're, we're trying to tax a completely different on its own um most of these power lifters they're they are trying to uh hyper specify the creatine phosphate system uh i mean do you know what creatine phosphate is right <laughs> do i look like okay, i know okay, bro okay, okay so so your body works on like three and three main energy systems and yeah. they're always working in three uh in ratios right people yeah. think the way we're thought we're taught about it is that it's it's a linear thing you start with the creatine phosphate system which is uh, a two a two-step process right it's just creatine uh and atp uh, an ADP binding. Uh, mm. So the creatine phosphate loses one phosphate and then it binds onto ADP and that's how ATP is formed. Mm. But uh, creatine is finite, right? Like the amount of creatine that we store in our, our uh, cells are finite. Depending how on how like regularly you're just like yeah, and you're, you're, smashing you're, you're, it. Yeah, you're taking creatine, but like, again, it's like, it's the, the, the rate of uh, repletion of creatine is also finite, which is why we move on to the next uh, energy system, which is the anaerobic system, mm. right? And that is, where we go through, we break down glucose, like carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. We break down glucose uh, to its uh, smallest form through a 10-step enzymatic process called glycolysis. And then from there, uh, depending on if oxygen is available, we then transport, we then use that uh, uh, molecule and it either goes into the anaerobic process of making energy or the aerobic process of making energy. Right. Right. Um, and so, well that, okay, well that went like, uh, down a tangent, but you know, yep. like the, 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 the power lifters, you know, like the, the, the time span for the creatine phosphate system to work is within like, uh, like zero to 10 seconds, right around there. And so it, it makes sense that they would be training like three sets, uh, three, three reps, and then they would be resting eight minutes. Because if you look at the science, it says that like, uh, the repletion of creatine phosphate takes about like anywhere from, uh, four to eight minutes, if I'm not mistaken. You know, like last I read, it was eight. So it would make sense that they would take a long, uh, a long time to be resting between sets, right? Because they're trying to replete that, uh, they're trying to replete that substrate so that they can work it again. And they're trying to hyper specify that substrate uh, heavily. Because mm. all they care about is, is performance from set to set. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
they're not necessarily that concerned with any of the other benefits that they get from training. They're just like, as long as I'm better than I was last time I did this, right. I'm winning. Yeah. That, that's the sole consideration. Right. You know, I didn't understand a single word oh, you <laughs> just said. Man, I mean like- <laughs> I tried to follow, but, uh, but you're just, uh, if I can summarize, is it uh, and how somebody uses energy? Uh, yeah, is, it's, is that what you're trying to say? It's it's basically it, and they're just trying to focus on the energy system that that provides uh, uh, that they use to carry out the activity, you know. And and um, if you, you know, our bodies work on uh, the stress that we give it, right? And so if we stress that system enough, then our our system adapts uh, to uh, upregulate energy, uh, upregulate the enzymes that then. Um, replete the the substrates right and well, so okay can we go off tangent or you guys still want to stick to your questions uh, i mean i mean like i guess we're here might as, right. might as well right how, how is it different from somebody who just goes to a, to a gym to just work out do, do they do, do they not get to the second level of uh, oh no they do i mean like if if you go okay so the anaerobic system um it is it it hold it helps you uh keep up work capacity up until like two minutes, right? And then after that, the aerobic system starts to take over. Okay. Uh, and the aerobic system uh, by definite, by in theory can hold up for an indefinite amount of energy, but it just okay. takes a very long time. Just, just for, the, for the viewers, the anaerobic is, uh, is lack of oxygen. The anaerobic, uh, the aerobic is with oxygen, right? Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's glucose uh, broken down and then how the anaerobic system the anaerobic system is independent of oxygen to make energy but the aerobic oh, system oh that's what it means yeah so you need you need oxygen to bind to the molecule that is broke that's the the end product of glucose that's broken down you need oxygen to bind to it so that it can go into the mitochondria okay so it, it doesn't mean that you're not breathing throughout the anaerobic system ah uh, that's yeah. why i was like <laughs> I was always thinking like no oxygen and with oxygen. Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. does that yeah, mean? You, you, you can just not breathe yeah, for two yeah. minutes and you'll be alright. <laughs> it's just um, shows how dumb I am. Yeah. Oh, you're not dumb, man. You just, I mean, like, you just, I mean, you it, just it shows how good you are at holding your breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So, uh, what, what was your question about? Like, uh, uh, how did we get hit? Yeah, I have no idea already, bro. <laughs> he, what he was asking is how how different it is the way that powerlifters are training compared with oh, to compared to general population. General population. Yeah. I mean, like we, we all use these energy systems uh, like every day. It's just that like uh, someone like a powerlifter would hyper specify like creating phosphate and anaerobic because that's within the time frame that, they, uh, that they're working in to uh, create the most amount of work you know, out of what they need from their body. So if you're in an uh, aerobic state, you, don't, you cannot get that uh, much amount of work? Uh, not necessarily because like look we're always working in like we're always in the aerobic state right like okay. right now you and I are uh, we're, uh, are in the aerobic pathway like we're at rest right um, and so though I like what Joel Jameson uh, I like what he says is that like so people think that like uh, um work done starts from creating phosphate and it goes to anaerobic and it, and then it, and then uh aerobic right but then i like what he says where he like everything begins in the aerobic system so like hmm. it, it makes sense because we're at rest and from being at rest we when we want to say pick up this bottle then we go into the creatine phosphate system right because it takes like me it takes me zero to ten seconds to to uh, okay i understand what you mean okay do you know what i mean yeah okay uh but then it doesn't deplete that much creatine because it's just a light right. activity yeah, right it's not th there's not too much of a stress yeah exactly upon your, your system so what power lifters are doing is that they are taxing that creatine phosphate system to a high degree they're picking up a very heavy bottle yeah so they yeah. need a lot of they need a lot of it to within that time frame of zero to ten seconds to pick up that uh uh that load right and um and so no we're, we're always living in the uh we're always more we're always aerobic it's just that um most people don't uh what's the word for it What's his question again? <laughs> sorry, most, most, sorry most, like I, I, went, I went off a tangent most there. Most people don't tax either of the other two systems yeah. on a general basis. Like you're, you're not forced to. They, they were mainly, those, those systems are something that we were, we evolved to use under very specific circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 
it's the kind of fight or flight thing. It, right. It, on a general basis, you're not going into those. I mean, the, the main the main thing that you're you're considering when you're looking at how competitive powerlifters or competitive bodybuilders and the average person trains is is, is just their goal and, yeah, and that's what they're true. looking yeah. at yeah, at yeah, the yeah. end it, of it. And like and a powerlifter, the reason they're resting so long has got nothing to do with how much weight they're trying to lose, how much muscle they're trying to build, anything. They most of it is cognition. performance, cognition. They, yeah. Yeah, most of it is their ability to get their brain and their muscles back to the point where they can do the, the same the, thing yeah. again. Yeah. Right. And they can execute it again. Right. Execute it with like uh, to a high uh, quality yeah. at the same time. The gen pop doesn't care about that. Yeah, they don't. They don't care about that. They don't care if, about If anything, anything, they want to be doing it worse and worse and worse so that they feel like they're working out. Okay. True. <laughs> Would you guys believe it that we're already on 26 minutes? Oh man, Would you that believe was so it? quick. Yeah, I told you guys. We haven't even got to question one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you, right? But um, uh, we'll stop here for a while and uh, we'll be back after, after the break with uh, Will and Ben. Hi, welcome back uh, with me, Azmir, uh, Will and Benny. <laughs> Benny, <laughs> Benny, it's gotta be, it's gotta yeah, have it's the NY in the Benny, back of it. Yeah, don't get it's it wrong. Point. Yeah. Anyway, we left off the, um, at, um, see, yeah, I, I don't know how to say it. Where did we leave off? We left off at the powerlifting. The, 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 general, the difference general. between like what Gen Pop are looking for yeah, from yeah, their yeah, workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I'm looking at the uh, question, uh, one of it, it's actually the last question. So we're gonna go there first and uh, uh, I like starting from the back, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Start from the end. <laughs> <laughs> what are the basic mistakes people tend to make with training outside of failing to consider stress? you should ask that. Yeah. yeah. I never, what, what are the basic mistakes, Will? Oh man, a bunch, dude. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing is, uh, and, and you know, I've been uh, like a victim of that too, like starting way too hard, way too much, way too quickly. But more is more. More, more is more, more is better. More is better. Yeah. Yeah. If some is good, more is better. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's not. You were saying? Uh, yeah, you know, like um, like throwing the kitchen sink at uh, their goals and this, you know, well, January's coming up, right? And yeah. the, mm. the whole new year, new me mm. uh, thing. Uh, um, just, you know, they, 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 you've got to, you got to think, you know, like most people, like they see, um, I don't know where this thought comes from, but then they see like, they, they think like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make a change, you know? And they, they go like, I have to overhaul my entire life. And they haven't uh, kept up with any sort of like strenuous physical activity in their, uh, since high school, mm. you know, like since high school PE, that's all they had. And then they just like, um, they were just sedentary up until, you know, the point where they decide to change. And then they go like, I'm gonna, do what I used to do when I was 17, but like, dude, you're 29, you know, and you haven't, you haven't um, jogged in how long? Like your idea of picking, uh, of exercise is uh, picking up a bottle, right? you know? So like, you've got to start like conservatively, especially if, 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 if you come out, uh, if, you, if you're coming from being completely sedentary, uh, you know, what, and then the the other thing is uh the thing is though like if, if if you look at it from a from a fairly relaxed point of view right if what most people did was they took their normal week and they changed nothing about it but instead they did i mean even if you're looking at a, a fairly relaxed workout what you 350 calories something like that 400 like we, we just kept it off at 400 like. yeah okay so you're doing a chilled 400 calorie workout i mean i mean it's not chilled but it, it's you're your eyes aren't sort of falling out your head when you're doing a 400 calorie workout, right? So that's, if you did that four times a week, you're then taking 1600 calories out of your general mm. thermodynamic equation. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at that on a daily basis, that's more than 200 calories a day. So just on that alone, you're, you're gonna start making progress and, it, and it's, I, I don't think enough people sort of look at that on a on a sort of weekly average basis and just go, oh, that's probably sufficient. Mm. I mean, uh, obviously, there, there's there's loads of stuff that comes with that. Obviously, your increased desire to eat or reward yourself yeah. from the fact that you've done those workouts and all that kind of thing. But say you were a, a template person 
and you just went, oh, nothing has changed in my life, but I've just done four, 400 calorie workouts a week, that you'd see change. Definitely. Like it's, yeah, definitely. And it's the most basic way to sort of go about it, really. Right. But uh, we were talking about the common mistakes that they do. They, what exactly is, what are they thinking? Like you, you guys are just saying that. Um, well, for a start, they try and do like 10. Right. In a week. Maybe. Okay, so they're probably overtraining themselves because yeah, they're, they're coming they're, from a sedentary lifestyle and yep. then um, not actually thinking about what they actually need to do. Exactly. They're sprinting out of the blocks. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Don't, they don't have the prerequisite uh, level of, of fitness to support the amount of work that they want to do. You right. know? Mm. So like they, don't, like, they don't have the muscle mass to, uh, and the amount of uh, adaptation of their body to recover from the, the workouts that they want to, you know, even, the, even an MNF workout that you find and they try and put themselves through that, they should probably be doing like what, the first three sets and the, that should be it, yeah you know? I, I remember when, the, because my, um, in, my, in my whole life, I've, I've done cycles of uh, working out, right. you know, and I fall off the wagon and I get back on it and then, you know, it goes on and on. It happens. Uh, so I remember when I was uh, t early, early 20s and I said I wanted to start workout again. The first session, I was like uh, all out, mm. right? Mm. Over the weekend, I got sick. Of my course. body aches. My body ached and, you know, I couldn't move. I was like, ugh, felt so, felt so miserable. But then as I got older and probably hopefully smarter, um, I tend to just, you know, okay, just do a brisk walk first, then go light jog then do maybe uh, empty bar squats and, and slowly get myself adapted. If I want, if yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, you know? that's, I mean, generally how I would tell people to start doing things, you know, it's like people come to me and they're like, how do I get fit? I'm like, uh, okay, why don't you just go to the park and run for 15 minutes and then come back to me if you can do that for a week. Right. And how long, how long, how long would you say that period is the, the easy, um, uh, workouts. It, it's not a specific period, though. It's it's just a general uh, sort of a general trending line upwards. Mm. That's that's all you're doing is is attempting to get better and better each week, really. Right. A until you get to a point, and then you stop, and then you take a chill, and then you you sort of let your body reacclimatize to the fact that you're now at this place. Right. And then you go back to doing so. That, that's the whole periodization thing that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the the massive. Thing that people have wrong in their heads is that they're getting better when they're in the gym that they're, they're not exactly they're teaching their body that they need to be better next time when they're in the gym but they're getting better when they're outside the gym how so Can that, you that, that's the recovery process that's okay. the adaptation process that is that is the the point where their body is going wow okay that if if you think about it like you okay you barely escaped from a lion mm. or something your body's going, oh, there are lions here. I, I only just managed to get away, but I could get caught next time. So I'm going to make sure that I recover harder and faster and stronger to be able to make sure that I can do so. Right. And we're just hacking that process for religion. Well, why do you think that people are having these uh, misconceptions about, you know, this New Year resolution? Of I don't know, fit? TV? I mean, like, that's... But that, that's the bit that feels crazy though. Yeah. The, the, the bit where you're running away from the lion is the bit that feels like you're making progress. So they, they get that in their head. Yeah, every time they're in the gym. Yeah. yeah, every time they're in the gym, that's the bit when they feel like they're doing work. So that's the bit that they feel like is contributing to their adaptation. Mm. But all it's doing is creating a reason to adapt. Right. But then again, I mean, I'm sure this is not something new. Right, people have New Year's resolutions every single year. Yeah. <laughs> right, but why haven't we seen, or why haven't you guys seen uh, a, a change in, in terms of mindset of people who want to get fit? Um, We're going down an industry rabbit hole there, though. Yeah, man. let's go down. It, well, it, no? it doesn't make money. Yeah. That's all it's all based around, man. So you mean there's a misinformation out there about... Um, Look, long-term slow results, like long-term, long-lasting results take time. And that doesn't sell, you right. know, like that, like very few people want to hear, like when I, when they come to me and be like, what should I do? I'm like, okay, well, you would need a prerequisite amount of aerobics so that you can support, uh, sustain higher work capacity. So I would 
want you to focus on doing uh, developing your cardiovascular respiratory uh, system so you can intake more oxygen you can breathe better and then after that like we, we can think about you know you think about it like this you gotta you gotta uh, uh, build the car before you, it can run right but most people just want to run without any engines and without you know without the engine without the tires without mm. the, the the frame they don't they just want to run right but you can't you know like you, you you definitely can it won't be the best way to do things but you can you, you can do it you know um, you can come with that from another angle as well though in that if for example say you're saying okay if you can go for a 50 minute jog every day for a week okay then then we're in a sort of cardiovascular position to get to get moving right at the same time they're in the mental position to get moving yeah like if i'm sorry but if you can't get your ass out of bed to run 15 times sorry 15 minutes seven times a week yeah then the longevity of what we're going to try and do here yeah is, is pretty low I've, I've got a client at the moment i've frozen their package because of inconsistency and I, I was just when you can tell me that you've walked your dog seven times a week mm. Then we'll get going again. Right. In the yeah. meantime, it's, it's 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 not productive because you don't have the mental capacity, yeah, to keep doing this consistently. I was I was about to ask that because um, how do you guys convince your clients that whatever um, preconception that they have is actually look, guys, it's not going to be a week, it's not going to be a month, it's going to be four, five, six, seven, or a year. How do you do that? I mean, and what's their reaction? When you say, you know, you need to develop this first, da 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 da. I mean, like, uh, first of all, education. I think you you can't. There is like the you, you consider all the practical side of things, uh, maybe the the optimal side of things about how you want to develop somebody. But then, at the same time, you know, like I I I used to think like, oh no, it has to be like everything by the book. But at the same time, I I now I I've sort of changed that. I think you can give people a little bit of what they want also at the end. You know, like, and I I guess it. Like if somebody really wants to sweat and then like that workout, I know that, you know, they're going to have a big recovery time. Maybe I program in like a finisher at the end, but there's nothing wrong with that because they got a, a, a bulk of the work already okay. done. Mm. So they will really want to sweat because that gives them buy in, yeah. you know, that gives them like uh, the, the, the feeling that they accomplished something. Okay. You really want, you really want to be thrashed at the end of the workout. Once you've accomplished everything that I needed you to do, here's. Here's a finisher. But do you do you actually um, say that to them? No, so obviously, I like unless they want to know so, why. So now they know. I mean, like, <laughs> I, 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 I'm like completely blank about that, man. Like, yeah, I'll definitely say that because at the end of the day, as well, you're you're taking money from them, right? So right. As long as they're well aware that that is not an optimal use of their cash. Yeah. Because that, that's also the one of the massive things that when when you tell someone, oh, by the way, this isn't going to be a six weeks thing. This is a six months thing. Yeah. They're going. What they're thinking is, oh, you want six months of my money? Yeah, right. they're right. Yeah. Right. That's that's the first thing they're thinking. They're, they're looking at you like a salesman, and it's quite a diff difficult barrier to cross. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, the because not not a lot of people have that kind of commitment as well, right? Yeah. It's. I think. I think. Generally, the people that find it hardest to convince them of that situation are also those that are they withhold a lot of information during their sessions right meaning i think if if you treat training not as a as a means of getting people to pick things up and put things down but as an education process and they're almost they're well aware of how much more you know than they do about this and the fact that in the, the other 15 waking hours they've got in their day they're doing work and they're doing life and all you're doing is this, then they're more open to the fact that for the, for the next six months, you're going to manage that for them. Right. It, it, it's, ju it's just a matter of, of treating it all as, hey, look, I'm, I'm really good at what I do because I, I'm so dedicated to it and I spend so much time researching it. And that is why you're going to need me for the next six months. As opposed to, oh yeah, no, this, this is just literally what, what I do takes six weeks. Mm. It's 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 yeah. Go go and read Men's Health and just follow it for six weeks and you'll be fine. If if you're able to kind of educate them on that and f make them feel like at the end of that six month journey or whatever, they're equipped and they're able to sort of take things forward. Then then they're looking at it very differently. They're looking at it as a, a life investment as opposed to 
like a quick fix. Right, but do you, for for both of you, if you, um, if when you when you get a client, right, and they they buy it into your idea of um, training, and uh, what what would be a, uh, what would be a success to you in terms of the client? Like you mentioned, after if they follow the six months program, do you have to balance between uh, your income and also. Uh, your clients' goals, right? Okay. At, at the end of six months, you either lose them or you keep them, sure. right? So for you, what is a definition of successful personal training? I think I don't know. Like outside of the money part, like I, uh, for me, if I've if I've worked with somebody and then like after six months they, I I I always have the thought in mind that when somebody works with me, that at the end of work, like there has to be an end date. You know, like they, mm. I wanted to be able to develop them to the point where like they don't need me anymore. They're self-sufficient. They're self-sufficient, and that is what I think a uh, uh, successful personal training mm. is. And if they want to keep coming back, then okay, yeah. fine. You know, yeah. but then like, uh, I I I like to develop them to the point where they're like, okay, I know how to uh, regulate my life f- for my goals. You mm. know, and that's really what it is. Like all personal training is is teaching them teaching. Like I think is teaching people how to uh, like exercise and work about uh, on top of that like teaching them how to uh teaching them what i know to get them to their goals you're teaching them how to fish huh? yeah pretty much mm. pretty much that's what it is to yourself benny benny <laughs> i mean yeah I, I, i come at this from a slightly biased point of view like full disclosure I, yeah i run a company that connects people to pts right, right? it's yeah. it's and what's the name of the company well, Um, yeah, I run a company called Jumper. So yeah. it's shameless it, plug. Yeah, shameless plug. That's okay. That's the purpose of this plug. podcast. Man. Yeah, Come exactly. Yeah. No, but like, I, I just wanted to like make sure that it wasn't it wasn't coming from a, an excessively biased point of view. Like, you know, we we do better if people stay on with their PTs. But my when I'm talking to our coaches, it's like if if you're afraid of giving them everything, right? It's 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 not that that one hour in your day is not oh I'm trying to make up for the lack of activity they've done. I'm also trying to make up for the lack of thought they've put into how they run their day. So I'm I'm giving them everything that I know, I've read, I've heard on podcasts, I've I've got in order to compensate for that. You can only do that and expect to retain them after six months if over the course of that six months you've gotten better and better and better. Mm-hmm. If if you're wallowing in your mediocrity throughout that whole process and pretty comfortable with What you told them on day one is is still everything that you know. Uh, then, so you, you're talking about um, you constantly uh, upskilling yourself, updating yourself to to create that value for for your customers. It's it's the only way you could possibly get to the end of six months with someone. Apart yeah. from the fact that you're the only reason why they get out of bed. Yeah, is if they put money on the table and they're paying for you as a PT. Yeah, even that they, they sometimes they don't show up, right? Like you said. Yeah, and and even and 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 if that's your your main value add, then you've. You've got people that get bored of it. You've got people that run out of money, it, or they, they, they just stop valuing you. If you're looking at, from my point of view, taking them past the six month point, you've got to be better than you were six months ago. Correct. And we, we, just to clarify, you, when you say you is you, not the client, Anyone. right? Yeah, yeah. So you as a PT, yeah, needs to be better than you are than, than you were six months ago. Yeah, yeah. Because they're they're almost every single session that they're they're taking, they're, they've upgraded their the PT that they're working with. Right. So they they're not going to go to someone else because you're better than you were last week. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the way I look at. So how do you guys that relationship? How do you guys manage what they do outside of um their training with you? Because you mentioned that they need to have uh, uh, rest. You know, they need to recover, right? Yeah. Some people like uh I don't know, they like to go out partying and things like that so they don't get enough sleep. So they don't Realize recover. Partying. <coughs> huh? partying is sinful. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's haram. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. So how do you guys manage that, man? And, I, and and can you guys? Okay, because you mentioned that um, you are compensating for what for the lack of things that they're uh, doing in their life, correct? Mm. So how do you then uh, manage that when uh, can 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 I don't know, lost for words? Uh, can uh, you actually okay. compensate? When you, they they don't get enough rest or recover, what you can give them is accessible things that they're. You, you, you're never going to do an overhaul. Yeah, it, it's always a matter of going. Okay, session one is what do you do now. 
In fact, the first week is what you do now. It's just a monitoring process. And then you're looking at the most bang for your buck, least, least commitment, least effort, highest result, things you can get from their week. Even if you're saying, uh, okay, you've, you've got to drink this much water and the cup on your desk can only be this big. You've got them getting out their seat and going to the dispenser mm. every, I don't know, 20 minutes. Because mm. they've, they've got to hit their 15 cup goal every week and, yeah. and, 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 it's, and, it's a, and it requires much more getting up and moving around. It, it's, just, it's just finding those kind of things. Like really. gamify things, yeah. you know? Gamify things, like give them like goals to hit. Like people like to see numbers. Like, you know, like it, what do you think, what, what do you think like, uh, like workout apps or logging, like think apps where you used to log stuff are so popular now is because they like to see like, you know, when, 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 when they track. hit those, yeah, they, yeah, they like to see that stuff. So like, it'd be good to gamify things, but like outside of that, you know, to tell them like the importance of like doing hippie woo woo stuff, like, uh, meditation it's so hard to get people to buy in but you know like it's like there's there's a lot of research behind like how meditation is great for uh, uh, getting out of a stressed state but to get tell the average day the average person nowadays like sit in the corner for 15 minutes and just like like put on a, if I, I use a meditation app but you know put on a meditation app like they go like I don't I'm not gonna do that right They're not gonna like it's it's tough you know like the way I see it I can I like like what Benny says. I choose to educate uh, and tell them like this is uh, why it, how it works and why it works and this is right. why it's beneficial for you to do this. But you know, you at the end of the day, you your reach is only so far. Yeah, you know? exactly. like so, you you've, both of you have, have come to terms that you are unable to change a client one hundred percent. Okay, but so, but, but if, if you're looking at that right, if, if you're looking at how you can change them, you're not going to change what food court is next to their office. Mm. But the food court that's next to their office has 18 different food stores in it, right? Whilst all their colleagues are going to N3, you can work out what is in all of those food stores and go, hey, now when, when you go to that food store, you're going to N16 and you're ordering this, this or this. Mm. It, it's, it's just a matter of going through that process where they feel like they've got the tools. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. they're going, oh, my day-to-day -day life hasn't really changed. Okay, I've got to go somewhere different and pay for, but I'm still having lunch with my colleagues. I'm still going to the same place. Like it, it's, it's the very small things that make a massive difference. And as opposed to having a, a, an unhealthy, nutrient shallow lunch of like chicken rice with their colleagues. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's nu the nutrient shallow, it's just, nutrient just chicken. Shallow? A chicken, it's protein, protein, right? protein, bro. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah they're, they're, they're heading up the top and having a, a chicken salad instead. And yeah. it, you know, it's, it's just those kind of differences that you can almost hack their life, and half the time they don't even realize. Yeah, you know, you, that, that's the goal actually. They don't even realize. Yeah, yeah. Just that you change anything. Yeah, they're just losing weight and they're not really sure yeah. why. Yeah, you're you're just opening their eyes that the the what do you call it? it's not opportunities the uh, options for them is right before their eyes it's just yeah. that they, they, yeah, they just give them see. better like give them options like better options that will help them you know towards their goal as best as you can that's the way i see it what, what is the common goal is it just fat loss or Don't I mean, know, it or is it the the, those two that fat loss and also get, getting more muscular and ripped what, what other goals are there it's it's beautiful when someone comes up to you and goes I'm only concerned with performance. Yeah, yeah, but for what, right? No, but I mean, regardless, if you're training someone who's only concerned with performance, I mean, it's, it's a rarity. And it's probably, you know, what you're used to in, in here in the gym. Mm -hmm. you know, everyone, I'd imagine everyone that walks through this door is, is here for performance. They're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but they're, they're not your general population. They're not. You know? They, it's, that is, and actually, that's almost the mindset you want to create. Mm. You, when someone walks in the door and they're going, I want to gain muscle or lose fat or whatever, I, I want to change my body composition. In an ideal situation, you want, you want to change that into them thinking, oh, I, I want to improve my performance. Right. Because the carry on of that. In your everyday lives is much higher, right? Is much higher. And it's just a healthier way to think about things, yeah. man. Like it's, mm. it, because, I mean, you can look great, but it's, it's superficial. Yeah. Right. If, if, if you're going deep down into, into, the reason that someone is training with you, a much healthier, more sustainable why. And even if we're looking at the, the six month process, mm. right? You, you're never gonna stop getting better. 
It's true. And getting better gets harder and harder and harder and harder after six yeah. months. So you're more likely to retain them if you've created a stronger why in the performance aspect right. of things. You change that mindset. Yeah. Right. Mm. Because no matter how good you look, you're always going to be able to get better. Yeah. But if all you're doing this for the is yeah, the, the, looks, vanity, the vanity yeah. part of it. Yeah, is walking into the office and your coworkers are going, oh, lost weight. Then yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's same same like me because uh, one of the cycles for my cycle, training cycles ended oh. when I got married. <laughs> oh, okay. So one goal has been, I don't need to look good anymore. I'm married. Yeah. So it's it's very temporary and it's not uh, long lasting. It's not for long term, right? Well, looking mm. good and being healthier. Yeah. You know, two different things. Yeah. They just kind of intersect somewhere. But, you but know. yeah, I mean, again, I'm sure a lot of people just look at, um, they look at how they, want to look the vanities yeah, yeah. The, the, the most of the people that they're looking at on instagram that look amazing aren't particularly healthy no they're yeah. not like they had to push their bodies that, that's that point, the right? that's the misconception you know like people think that people with like um like shredded abs they're healthy they're not mm. you know like to, to to maintain that uh like like amount of body fat for that amount of time that's not healthy though not? i don't think so no not, it is? not is unless it? you're genetically gifted like there's always the outliers but then like you know for most people like maintaining like saran wrap skin type uh uh you know yeah uh body fat levels it's not really healthy you know like uh, when, once your body fat levels and your your uh, amount of calories start to drop to that point you know like your hormone your hormonal system starts to down regulate everything stops working your you know your pp can get hard uh stuff like women start losing their their periods you know things like that uh if you sustain that for a long like and that's the that's the unfortunate uh thing that i guess like him and i are still trying to tell people and still trying to fight it's just like just because you have abs don't mean you're healthy you know uh yeah okay guys um 50 minutes uh i just want to continue a little bit more mm. uh after this break we're going to talk more about other things that people get wrong in th- when they want to get fit because that's essentially that's what we're trying to talk to talk yeah, about right yeah. so we'll just be right back lost. yeah <laughs> right right after this Hey, uh, hi guys! Uh, welcome back to uh, Bubble Junction with uh, Will and Benny. Benny, okay, we're yeah. going to close it off with uh, some of the stuff about the misconception that people have about getting fit and uh, healthy. So, what do you guys think? What apart from uh, how they approach their, the training after a while of being sedentary, what else do you think that uh, commonly that people people do that that you know uh, that's wrong? Oh, or, okay. Well, or counterproductive. I think uh, after a while, like after they've 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 gone through the initial period of training for a while, uh, I think there is divided into two. The way I see it, like when I'm walking through a gym, I see some people just don't train hard enough, mm. uh, and some people train way too hard. You know, like way too they they train way too much, and, and you know, not being sexist, but the people that don't train hard enough usually are women. The people that train way too much, way too hard, are usually men. Why do you think that's so? Oh uh, man, I I don't know, man. It's just the ego, the male ego, the guts, probably. Yeah. They just wanna, they just wanna uh, show off to the women, and then I don't know if it's the show off <laughs> part. I I really don't, but like generally that is the case, yeah. you know. Like, I, I would say I'd, I disagree with that though. Yeah, yeah. What so do you women, think so? women, women women worked out work out harder than men. I I would say from my personal experience, right. the, the people that are training too much too excessively other women the, well, training volume is not the same as training intensity oh. right and um the, the way i the way i see it is that like like they, they sure they train a lot and i don't mm. agree i don't disagree with you that women train like women will out train men any mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. right because like uh, j- just genetically women are just uh 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 built to endure a lot more pain than men like men, men can physically take a, a, a lot of punishment but like not a lot of it right but right. women can and that is that is why you see like like women like train with a lot of volume B- uh, but men like um the way i see it they train way too hard with too much weight with a lot of crappy form and they don't they don't care women care like so much like the way i see it women care so much about their form that they never move up like in weight they never move up in anything they just go like okay it's got to be like the same 10 10 uh, not, not like 5 kilo dumbbell that i'm going to be doing bicep curls off and i'm like girl you are good you like you should be adding more onto that now and like the, i see guys like swinging mm. you know like swinging dumbbells like going like ah pump man but but if you're looking at common mistakes and the difference like i i disagree a couple of times with the difference between sexes 
But I think if we're going to go with something that's pretty general as a mistake, yeah. you're looking at the fact that mo most men are obsessed with getting as high up on the rack as they can mm. of the dumbbells, and most women are scared of moving past a certain number. Yeah, that's it. I'd say if you're going to make one sexist generalization, it's probably that. Yeah. It, like, in terms of volume and intensity and stuff, I, as a brain geek, I, I wouldn't even say that it's, it's very stereotypical from women to men. Like I've got clients that, or like, you know, we've got clients that are at all ends of the spectrum. Mm. But the general, general. thing is definitely the case is that all any guy looks at when they're looking at a rack is it's how to get how, to the, how yeah. to get to the end, the last dumbbell on there. Yeah. And all any woman is looking at is that'll make me big. So you see, uh, yeah. the, the, the problem with, with, with that is that, yeah, I, I can assume that they are training by themselves, right? Because there's no one else, no one's actually training them or telling them that, look, this is what you should be doing instead of uh, what they are doing right now. Yeah. But right? Even as a coach, like you're, you're stood, like with most women, you're stood there trying to convince them Oh, still. That they're able to pick that one up. Exactly. Huh. Like and, I, and, and that they won't turn into the Incredible Hulk if they pick that one up. Like I, like Have I, you ever asked them, like, why do you guys, uh, the girls, think that just by picking up a dumbbell and barbell that they're going to turn into an Incredible Hulk? Why do you think that is? Have you ever asked them before? Um, well, it's an association thing, right? They're yeah, seeing, I think so. They're seeing massive people in, I don't know, movies or Instagram or whatever. <clears throat> lifting those kind of weights so they or lifting big weights so they assume that lifting big weights is what got them there how old are you the, the general age of your clients um, like mid 20s for most of mine at least most of ours like are mid, mid 20s older. older most of ours like are older yeah 30s uh, yeah i mean honestly if you're looking at the people that are willing to spend money yeah one or two k a month on okay the, on pt wow <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you're, you're generally looking. Like right. That's our target market. Yeah, the yeah. older generation. Yeah. yeah you're, you're but but then again, people of, of, of that uh, age category, they're not. Um, I'm sure they follow Instagram as well. Uh, or are they, are they like devoid of any technology, uh, you know, um, uh, knowledge that they, they don't. They can't even Google to see that. Look, uh, even if you lift weights, you're not going to get bulky. Uh, you know, but we still have this stereotypical mindset that you know women have that if they if they if they do weights, then they get you know big. I don't I do, just don't understand why mm. at this day and age, <coughs> Google that's still prevalent among women. Yeah, I don't either. You know, like you, for for me, like you can try and convince them to the cows come home that like look, you know, like you lifting like this won't make you big because like I wish that that was the case. Yeah. That my job would be so easy. I I only need to see you once a week. You pick that up one time, and then you see me next week, and that's that's all I need to see you for. Like I wish that was the case, but like, you know, like you can you can I, I don't know why it is you can try and educate them to the cows come home about the science about uh, uh of it, but then, like if their entire uh goal for exercising is uh vanity driven, then it's hard. But then like after a while, once you start to push them uh, along the performance side of things, like, because after a while, what, once someone comes on with you, they, they're they not looking to, to look good uh, so much, as much as when they first started out. Yeah. And you know, once they, they then once you start, like once they start asking you like, okay, I want to push them. That's when it's, they, they can, I guess like you can start to see that they're trying to, they're, they're ridding themselves of that misconception. Yeah. But you know, it's good. I don't know, man. Like, I really don't. Like, I can educate as much as possible, but sometimes it's just the bias that they, they're, like, the belief. And I was telling you just now, you know, that's why I hate when uh, I hate, like, dabbling into beliefs too much because a lot of the times it's just very rooted in bias, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's that, you know? What, what about you? What we do pretty much all the time is attempt to get people to move away from what they think is the case yeah from what they've been sold right really i mean whether it comes from what, what food they're eating mm. what what blanket diet they read because their friend told them that's how they lost weight Did yeah you say keto yeah <laughs> don't, uh, please don't, say, don't keto. say the k word don't, don't say the k -word. um or we're gonna get there no, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> um, or or whether it's you know the, the type of training that their friend their friend did and that's how they got to where they are. Yeah. And I mean, there is this, this 
it's, it's just an industry full of blanket statements because if mm. you don't sell a blanket statement, you're not going to sell anything. Yeah. Right. You, you can't, you can't sell. It depends. Oh my God. Yeah. But the, you're, you're doing it. That's the, yeah. I mean, are you exception it. to the rule? Is I, it because you're a white man? I heard <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. It's you're not. <laughs> mate, white men in America ruin the industry. <laughs> so it's definitely not anything to do with skin color. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're it's not offended, are you? I mean, not at all, joking, not yeah? at all, not at all, mate. <laughs> Malaysia for 15 years, I'm used yeah, to those jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's just the fact that you, you can't sell it depends. And I mean, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying, you know, the, the whole <clears throat> ethos of what we do is when someone goes looking for a PT and they're going, oh, who's the best PT for me? Mm. We're going, well, it depends. Look at, look at how you like to train or, or look at a video of this PT talking and see if you want to spend four hours a week with them. Look at, listen to the way that they train clients and think about whether that would keep you coming back on a weekly basis. Yeah. Everyone has different things that they enjoy. There's no, there's no exercise that is the key to losing weight. Yeah. There's no exercise that is necessarily the key to lose, uh, building muscle. Deadlifts. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, if you're looking at the key to building muscle, that the difference between exercises is purely the stimulus to tax ratio. Yeah, 100%. The amount of stimulus you're able to apply to a muscle versus the amount of shear strain you're putting through the joint that it's working, that it's attached to. So I'm, I'm an engineer by trade, so that's how I look at absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's, that's the only difference between different exercises. And then if you're looking at different diets, it, it, it's it's just a matter, usually with clients, of what you're able to stick to. Yeah, yeah. The the best the best diet is the diet that you can adhere to for a long time. Yeah, that doesn't drive you crazy. Yeah, that doesn't drive you yeah. insane. You know. Actually, um, um, I tell this to a lot of young younger people that, um, based on my own experience, and and I'm probably not a good example for anyone, but, um, I, the best way is for you to do something that you know you can do consistently for a period, yeah, a longer period of time. Yes, you that, know? that is hundred percent. Yeah, because I tried like doing this diet where uh, I, w I was on a two thousand calorie. Uh, calorie okay right so the first week was like hell <laughs> you know and then uh um but the 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 the, the list of uh, fish i uh, sorry the list of ingredients of food that i can eat um it was based on my my taste like fish tuna blah 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 okay. and all this sure. but after a while mm, that's a good start yeah to be fair yeah so after a while how much tuna can i eat you know so yeah. it's, we're, we're talking not about the actual fish and then we cook the tuna this is just tuna from the can because that's the easiest way that i can get the, the food yeah for for myself right uh and of course if you buy a, a tuna it's probably going to cost a bomb which that's not the issue yeah you know so after a while it's like it's too much tuna too much eggs my body because i'm like 114 right okay. so the amount of protein that i need to take is like a lot Wow. How much protein were you taking? But, but I think it was about 40%. Before. But the amount of protein you take depends on your goals as well, right? Yeah. yeah. For, for at the time, it was weight loss, right? And here's the thing. And I've, 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 spoken, I've, I've spoken about this in, in this podcast before. Um, initially, the, the guy that I went to said, okay, you need to take about 35% protein and then carbohydrates <laughs> and then fat, right? He says within two weeks, you should be able to see some, some uh, reduction in your weight. Okay. And at that time, I was still doing a lot of uh, training. Sorry, what did he base that recommendation yeah. on? Did, did he ask what you were doing, what yeah. your lifestyle was like, yeah. all these other things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, he, I think he has uh, this machine where he takes my uh, basic uh, BMR. Mm. And then he, I think there's a calculation where he calculates the, the calorie that I need to take in order for me to lose weight. Was it right? an in-body? I wasn't an in-body, it's some other machine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the first two weeks, nothing happened, you know. And I, I, I told him, I said, like, look, uh, I think you need to increase my protein because I think if, based on my experience, if I eat just a smidgen amount of carbs, I will retain it, you know. Of course, that's not scientific. Yeah. But I know. <laughs> you know. Just by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm talking yeah. to a bunch of coaches, uh, you know, with a lot of knowledge. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I sound so stupid. But no, anyway, don't say that. I just know that if I take a lot of carbs, uh, I'm not going to lose weight. So the, he changed, he changed the, the diet. So I had more, more protein and less, less carbs. Lo and behold, the next couple of weeks, I lost weight. The next couple of weeks, 
I lost weight, you know. Was was your goal weight loss or weight fat loss? loss? Uh, so here's the thing. He said that it, 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 you shouldn't look at weight. You should look at, look at your your fat loss. Yeah. The, but, the body fat percentage. But equally, you might be attributing that to the lack of carbs after two weeks. But at the same time, you'd probably been on a calorie deficit for two weeks, mm-hmm. and then you were maintaining a calorie deficit for further weeks. Yeah. But you. So, Okay, yeah, but, but, but your, your energy source had changed and you've gone, oh, it's the energy source. It may well just have been... The calorie deficit. The calorie deficit. It might have yeah. been that as a result of the fact that you, you were now seeing someone re- regarding your intake of food, you started being more conscious of it and you started eating better and you become healthier and your body was more yeah. willing to lose fat after that point. Like, th- I think if we're talking just going generally on the whole mistakes that people make or misconceptions about getting healthier and fitter mm-hmm. it's it's sort of blanket statements about things yeah it's it's random attributes that they're giving to certain changes they've made it might not actually be that right okay. there are so Fair many enough. other factors taking place in your yeah. life at the time yeah that unless you're able to live like a robot and that is literally the only thing you've changed then it is then you can't necessarily make that. There's there's the fact that you've done that, and if you were less educated than you are, you yeah. might you might be sat but you might be sat at a coffee morning going, yeah. oh this is how this is how you lose weight. Yeah. And you're telling someone else, and they're going, oh that's oh I need to rid all carbs from my diet. Yeah. And maybe that was what worked for you. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's what works for someone else. Hundred percent. Yeah. I, I totally agree so with you. So much of this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, if we're looking at that generalization. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I don't I don't. Um, I, I don't impose on what I did to myself on other people. I just say that this is my experience yeah. uh, and this is what I did. And no, but yeah. that is. But what I'm saying is that if you were less, you you don't do that because you're you're part of this industry and you see so many people doing mm. things so many different ways. Yeah. If you weren't, you'd probably be doing so. Yeah. Al- Maybe. Yeah. Alternatively, uh, the drop in carbohydrates. Uh, you you have to remember that protein has a uh, is thirty percent thermogenic. So. Uh, it, more. It, yeah, thirty percent more thermogen- thermogenic than all the other macronutrients. So, like carbohydrates would be about like what, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me in this. Like f- f- five to fifteen percent, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. But camera, uh, so you're quoting. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, like, anyone who's who who heard that, just go look it up. Right. Yeah. But uh, mm. I, I can't remember off the top of my head about like five percent. Uh, like fat zero thermogenesis, but protein like uh, for let's say every hundred grams you you uh, consume, you theoretically uh, assume that 30% of it is going to be used up uh, uh, as energy, like turned into energy by your liver, right? Um, so that could that could be one of the reasons too, like he dropped your carbs and he put the same amount of, it's the same amount of calories, but then your body is, you know, burning. Burning more. Yeah, yeah. but just by way of you eating that specific macronutrient. So it could be just that as well. But at the same time, when I was talking earlier about it depends on your goals, like if, if your goal during your day is to perform maximally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Like at, at work or something in the office, upping your protein intake is not necessarily productive because your body is working 30% harder to digest your food when you need to be thinking, for example. Yeah. But there are so many considerations that, I mean, it's the reason why we have a job. Right. It's the reason why we manage people's lives for them. Right. Is be- there's just so many little intricacies yeah. to the process of people's training and nutrition and the stress and, and all these other And habits. I guess that's, that's why people don't think in general. They need somebody, people like you guys to actually think for them, right? Because it's, it's, it's a hard it, thing to think it, a lot it, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very complex. There's a lot of other stuff going on in life. Yeah, yeah. You're not I mean, not just that. I mean, the, even the, 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 the topic of diet and training, it's, it's so... Um, complicated it's, 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 there's a lot of things right just talking about your energy yep. states <laughs> it's already confusing me already so i'm sure a lot of people out there don't understand all this and how the body works and how diet affects their their training and also their goals can i just say something um of course you can say something the, you're here to say things uh, well i was hoping <laughs> to just keep quiet the whole yeah. time uh you know like the the body is complex and the way the body works is really complex but to to get the body healthy is generally quite simple. Like you just, you know, like move a little bit more, like eat a little bit healthier, like prioritize protein, you know, like, like I don't, I don't want to sell it that like, like 
you, you know the everyday person without a coach cannot like do this like like the, there are very simple steps that you can take that you know can can put you on to uh, uh, a path of a health, healthy lifestyle okay yep right like the way the way that we understand it is obviously like 10 layers deeper than anyone is willing to go yeah but you know like gener- if people ask me come up to me and ask me like i wouldn't unless they wanted to know the science of it i wouldn't go like okay this is why this is why this is why i just go like do these things and they go like what so simple i'm like yeah i mean like yeah. you know you move a little bit more lift some weights uh uh like run a little bit walk more like eat healthier yeah you know? do more consume less yeah I mean, if, uh, if that if your goal is uh, weight loss, obviously, but you know what I mean, like just in in terms of like health in general, like just do the prerequisite prerequisite things that make you human. Mm. Move, walk. But if you so if you're talking about being human, then then you're coming back to the the only reason why it's even necessary to be this complicated about things is because of the way our day to day lives have evolved. That's true. You know, we've we've come so far from eating food, building huts, and mm. making babies. Right. That there's so much compensation that needs to be taking place in the time that you're, that you're spending with a coach. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't actually be that hard. If someone gave you no job and put you in a, in a forest or something, and, and you're the whole, in order to get food, you'd have to move. Mm-hmm. And it, the, the whole, like everything about your life required moving, and you couldn't, eat things that mess with the receptors in your body. Like anything that comes from a packet has ideally mm-hmm. been engineered by someone who's trying to get you to eat more of it. Right. So if, and you know, this, this kind of goes down the sort of processed food and sugar tunnel and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But if you're just looking at sort of why everything's so difficult. Right. And why you need to be so technical about everything. It's because every, like everything else is working against you. The, the, everything that we kind of evolved and made us intuitive about what we're doing on a day-to-day basis has changed like, mm-hmm. rapidly in, in, if you're looking at like ratio wise. And so that's the only reason why someone needs to go, oh, well, this is how this system works and that system works. And, and you know, we're, we're no longer motivated by making sure we can catch an antelope. Mm. We're, yeah, okay, this is sort of a lot of distraction. Um, there's distraction, yeah. there's, there's just a change in motives. There's and also like we're, we've advanced enough as a society to go like, look, why does this work? Also, yeah. you know, like we we're not we're not being distracted by being chased down by a bear or whatever. Yeah. So we can, you know, so we can go like, huh? It's a luxury. Now. I want. I yeah. wonder why like like energy systems are the way they are. And I wonder why that bear didn't catch yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, how could I out sprint that bear? Yeah, no one's no one's sat on a rock these no, days. Because going. the bear doesn't do any aerobics. Yeah, yeah no, it's true. Yeah, that's why. That's like silly bear. Yeah, such a silly bear. Yeah. He needs to have a chat with Will. Stupid bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he'll, he'll yeah. probably fall asleep, but he needs yeah. to have a chat. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, probably. He probably would. Well, guys, uh, uh, I think that's a nice way to end the podcast, right? Um, yeah. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh, I really enjoyed the talk. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm also an engineer by, by, by education, right? And uh, I like the technical stuff. I really do. Right. But you have to give me some time to just digest it, you know, because I like to see how I actually, uh, when, uh, I was... Um, the saying to you that um, I, fo- I read some Polykin stuff, right? So th- inside their article, sometimes they mention about, uh, you know, why you take, why you eat steak in the morning, right? That was one one of his beliefs, right? Right. So because of this, and then the, you know, in the in the body, this happens. If you do this, this this happens to your body. Blah blah blah. It's and all like system controls yeah. charts, right? Yeah. You remember yeah. those modules, right? It's just like one arrow square. Something yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I saw a chart. You know, I don't actually understand it, but I like understanding how it works yeah. you know so i really appreciate that you you you've gone a bit technical uh, with uh, in the, in the podcast uh, although i don't know whether the general viewers don't know whether understand. anyone else cares yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I i i do think that some of some of my uh, uh, members would appreciate it because they're very very uh, technical themselves as well yeah know? in any case uh, if you guys want to come back again and we can talk more about all this stuff please you are, you, you are welcome you know, just give me a buzz and we can set it up. Thank right? you. Um, before we go, uh, any last things that uh, you guys want to say? Where can people find you? You can plug in anything you want. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, IDGA Fitness underscore underscore. Um, 
Also, powerlifters should do cardio. <laughs> we'll talk about this yeah, next you know, time. Yeah, in, next in, time in, in, in the next yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, podcast. <laughs> in the next episode. Yeah. Yes, sir, Benny? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not really concerned about personal plugs. Just if you're a coach or if you're looking for coaching, look up Jumper, J-O-O-M-P-A, on any channel, internet, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. That's where you'll... That's where you'll find that kind of stuff right. from me. Is that Jumpa, the uh, word, uh, word play on like Jumpa? Jumpa, yeah. Jumpa. Oh. Like the mama sons of uh, coaching. Yeah. Yes, basically. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, thanks again for coming. And uh, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, click the notification <laughs> button. If you like this show, please like it and uh, leave your comments. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time. Ciao. See ya.